Hello and welcome to the Fans Boxing Podcast, the podcast that asks the questions you want to hear. And I'd like to welcome to the show this week, British Longsdale featherweight champion, Ryan Walsh. Are you all good, Ryan? I'm good, thank you, Adam. Oh, brilliant, cheers. Thanks for giving up your time today, mate. No problem. Before we get stuck into where you're at today, mate, with your career, we'd like to take you back to the grassroots, if you could, mate, where it all started for you in boxing. Yeah, um, for me, it was, um, it's been in my mum's front room since we started. It's in Rochdale. Um, we had a very small front room, and all three of us used to put the gloves on. And uh, it, I think it, mainly it was because my dad, he, he knew as three boys, because uh, I've got a twin brother and an older brother, we were always going to fight. That's, a, that's always going to happen. So what he'd done, he made sure that we couldn't really hurt each other. Got some big gloves, and we continue to do that today. <laughs> if we have any problems, we put the gloves on and we sort it out. And that's, the, that's the best way of sorting things, obviously. But um, who was the champion back then in the front room matches? Michael, <laughs> he, he was hard work. He was out. He, he, he's Michael's very strong as a junior, and that he used to he, he'd stop and knock people out as an amateur. He's very very strong, and he had a like an eighteen month two year age gap on us, and uh, he'd have to go on his knees sometimes. As we got older, he'd go on his knees <laughs> to, just to entice us. He'd do, he'd do anything. He, I think no one was happier than him when it was finally got to a point where he could stand up and have it with us. But um, yeah, Michael was part was part of us our whole careers. Whether it be in my mum's front room, whether it be in a gym. I mean, my mum's front room, which wherever wherever we lived, whether it be in Rochdale or where we are now in Cromer, that's that's in more rounds than like <laughs> canvas. <laughs> that's great to hear, mate. Do you think that's the extra motivation having the two brothers around you to keep you in the boxing gym? Hundred percent. Um, it's a unique. Well, it's getting less unique. I see wearing boxing, but for us, it's very unique, and it's it helps. Have um. I get to see Liam's success, so I'm trying to catch up with him. And um, nobody can grow me better than them two people. Uh, the other person, I'm glad he's dead now, but bet- between my brothers, that's, I still get some of my dad from them, and I think they'll always keep us grounded. And it's it's a, it's, a, it's more than a team; it's more it's blood. So it's it's um, well, I'm in a very very lucky position to have my brothers. Yeah, that's a great story to follow. But can you just kick us off with some of your uh, amateur amateur days? What what was that like? Yeah, well, I started a little bit later than Liam and Michael. Liam started as early as possible. I think Liam was like four and a half stone. I think he was 32 kilos, <laughs> something daft, when Liam started. It was really light. Um, and, and Liam and Michael had t- total different amateur starts. Like, Liam couldn't buy a win. I mean, some some fights he did lose and others. He's just, you know, amateur fighting's crazy. And Michael was the total opposite. He was very, like, I think he won his first 11 or something crazy. And he only ever lost really dodgy decisions. I've seen a couple of them live. It was horrible. Um, and myself, I started about 14. I thought I was going to be a footballer. <laughs> I wanted to be Beckham and um, it all went wrong. <laughs> at about 14, I got to county level at football and then that was the end of me. I realised I can't, I'm not going to progress in this. I'm not going to be good enough. And i tell you another thing. My brothers kept bringing on these massive trophies as amateur. And I'm thinking, I'll go and play football and they give me a little medal, a little trophy. <laughs> oh, I want something like that. And um, my dad, Never once pushed us. I tell you, there's the line into boxing for me. I remember sitting watching my brother lose to this. He went on to win the school boys. He's called Ken Trowbridge, I think he was, and uh, he's big, long, awkward amateur. Good as well. He's good. And and I, my dad said at that time. Well, again, I was I must have been eleven, twelve. He said you can beat him, and that was it. That's all he said. And he never once pushed me into boxing. And. Uh, a few years later, and on my fifth fight, I think I get I gets to fight the kid that he said I'd beat, who'd have beat Liam like three or four times, and I beat him exactly like he said I would. And I think that goes to show styles in boxing and that. And then Liam went and fought him after, and believe me, beat him. Just didn't get the decision, and it was it was nice because I think that's been it's happened a lot in our careers. Amateur and pro, one of us do something, the other one will then go and follow, and. Um, like I had to lose my British title, Liam wins it, and then I win it. Once he's done, I don't know. I'm possible, I believe a lot more than I, I should be able to win it, and because we do everything the same, we try and we do everything together. Yeah, that's, that's I guess like I say, that's been great to follow over the years. But a few national titles as amateur, right, Ryan? Yeah, me and Liam, we um, Michael got to a national final. He got to the it was called the NSCYP or NABCs then, and it went to the NSCYPs which is a senior tournament, which gets you a, it gets you a ranking. But I think me and Liam got to two consecutive junior ABA finals and we just couldn't do the double. I, I won it the first year. Liam lost in the final. 
I lost the second year. I lost to McDonald, um, Jeremy McDonald. Oh, brilliant, so, brilliant. That's a world title challenger. And, and Liam won it. Um, I will we'll tell you a little side story on that. Jeremy McDonald is the only fighter I've come across, amateur or pro, who, after the result, he put his hand up. And we were bought, he was shocked. And I certainly was because I know I won the fight. I'm not saying I've, I've never lost a fight because it's quite clear. Look at the Selby fight. Look at other, there is a few amateurs. I've had a couple of real close amateurs where I got the nod where it could have went the other way. But he looked at me, looking at him in amazement, and he went, I'm sorry about that. He shook my hand. <laughs> and, I, and I took back and I thought, what, what a bit of class that is. That, yeah, you don't come across that often, do you? No, do you? No, you get fighters try and con things and say things, and I know, I know that that same class was Sean Lee Selby when he beat me. I never once tried to profess that I'd beat him. I never once. It, it was a close fight, but not close enough for me to even cry. He won that fight in my eyes, two or three rounds, and uh, yeah, that was a little bit of class that I got then to show to Lee Selby because I won't. I won't make no bonds about it. I know I lost that fight. So, But as amateurs, we did win a, few, a fair few things. Um, I won the junior ABS, the NABCs. I got to the ABF final against Luke Campbell. I lost. Yeah, because that's one of the first questions we had come in. How close was that fight? Because there was three penalty, penalty points when they were... Again, I've, I've had to, I got to a, I got to four finals, I think. For, I think four finals I got to. And I've had some horrible amateur decisions. I fought um, Paul Edwards in Liverpool. Drew 9-9, lost on a came back in the semi-finals at one of the ABA finals, or semi-finals, that annoyed me. And then I got to the ABA final the next year against Campbell. I was I was three points going up into the last round. And then I lost a fight by one point, I think. And the ref gave him four. Because every time he said, if you watch any of my fights, amateur or pro, you'll see I don't initiate holes. I've got little arms and I like to work in that space, which is close. I rarely hold. It's uh, not something. The reason I think the reason I don't hold is we didn't hold in our we didn't hold in my mum's front room. <laughs> we fought, you know. You'd be we won't have none of that. We were we only had a little space anyway. We don't. You watch me. You watch me and my brothers. We do not. We don't hold and clinch on. We're not that type of fighters. Um, you, nine times out of ten, the hold will be initiated by the other fighter. And like I said, I like to work inside. But the referee took. Give me two warnings. Now, in amateur boxing, every time he warns me, that's two points. And I, and I tell everyone this story, and uh, I have no ill feeling towards Luke Campbell. You can only see how good he is with the, what, what he done in his amateur. But in that particular ABA, you got your points given to you after every round. And I won 11 of the 12 rounds that I competed in the senior in 2007, it was. I won 11 rounds. I lost the last round, and that was due to the ref taking points. And I'm not the ABA champion, so I'm a little aggrieved by that. Was, was round... that was, sorry, so was that hard to take at the time, mate? Oh, yeah, I was gutted. I was proper, proper gutted. My brother Michael won it. You see, we don't seem to be able to get a double. The only double we got as a family was Liam won the Commonwealth Youth Games in 2004, and he was ringing me up from Australia at like 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I'm through. I'm to the next round. Do like that, like that. And I was in the NA. NSCYPs it was called then and uh, I won that at his weight and he we were both bantamweight champions he was representing uh, England over in Australia and I was represent and I was like so because he went out the country I got to go up a weight so we, that was our first double as amateurs or pros and it took all the way till my last fight to finally get another double <laughs> world we won titles it doesn't seem to go our way like again Liam fought in that same ABA as where Michael won I lost in the final. Liam lost to Stephen Smith by a point in Liverpool. And I'm still yet to come across an amateur or oh, amateur coach who says Liam. But again, it was tight. You couldn't complain. It weren't one that were stewing up. I did think Liam won. It was all, I think Liam was a point down or all square going into the last. But again, we're not complaining about that at all. That is just, that is what it is. It was, it seemed to like Liverpool as an amateur boxing, they, they got a real stronghold. A lot of the semis, a lot of the. Like a lot of the good fighters. If you, I, I've been, I've said this to um, I don't know if you know him, Danny Flexin from the Boxing News. Yeah, we had him. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to put this out to anybody as and ask, and I'll ask this question: In the two thousand and seven ABS, has there ever been a stronger amateur to pro turnover? Because in that particular um, two thousand and seven ABS, if you just use the finals, you that means that you're losing a world champion in De Gale, you're losing a British and Commonwealth champion in Liam. Then you've got Frankie Gavin. Look at what he's got. He's got. He won Europeans, all sorts. Stephen Smith's about to fight for a world title. He won it. 
You've got Samir, he fought Stephen Smith in that final. He, he's fought for Commonwealth and British. You've got Groves, who's fought for two world titles. You've got Bellew, who's fought for world titles. Um, you've got Yaffrey, you've got my brother Michael. Um, Saunders, I think, won it that year. Got some crazy I, I, names. That's what I mean. I'd like to see if there's been, pound for pound, a better turnover ratio from that point to pro, because I think you struggle to find a better turnover. I can't think one. No, nah, you will think you're right with that, Ryan. Definitely. It's got real... I said they put that to Flex, and I said, you look at... the. I mean, if Gros would have won a world title, I bet you would have wanted to... Oh, it would have sold it, because you... Like I say, in that 2-7 final, the girl didn't even get there. Gros beat him, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, of course. So, it's crazy. Yeah, obviously, um, obviously touching on them, but obviously turning pro, obviously turn pro... Was it the kickstop, Jim? Yeah, that's what with Graham Everett. Yeah, yeah, Graham up. Everett, a great trainer. Obviously, I've, I'm brother in laws with Paul Davis, a great local pro, and yeah. I've been around Graham. He's a, he's a great character as well as obviously a great trainer. Yeah, sound. Um, he's more than a trainer as well. He's um, I don't think <laughs> trainers is a funny term because Graham will tell you. In front of, had, we've always been very, very self motivated, whether it be amateur or pro. And we've had good people around us. Yeah, and and Graham will, Graham's more than just to train. And so. It's a different relationship than oh he'll come and then he he's always been for us and yeah he's he's sound and uh, and he he does work he does real good work and I think he doesn't really get the 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 recognition he deserves. I went to a Norfolk Sports Awards recently and there was I don't like it. there was a a best coach of the year now in one year Graham Everett's just turned over two British British champions in one year if you go from the November to the September. Yeah, and he wasn't even in the nominations, and I, I don't understand it. I, I know boxing isn't doesn't get the the pull it deserves, and I was talking to a friend just today. Boxing doesn't get the 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 like the airtime or the paper time. It's, it's getting much better. It's in a boom at the moment, to be fair, but it's not in the purpose at all. It's not in the purpose nowhere near enough, and that's where it, it can have an influence. It can have a, a bigger influence. The purpose seem to blanket it a little bit, and. Yeah. I think it's, it's a yeah. Bit of a I think you're totally right because obviously you just get the Frank Warren right up in the Sun newspaper. I used to enjoy reading them on, at work and stuff, but they've seemed to gone. Yeah, I think the purpose of uh, pretty much like the BBC. Yeah, everyone should know that your British champions is. It should be like you, you can tell me. Probably most people can tell you uh, the starting elevens and things for a club team in the Premier League, and I just think they, they do take so much. And it's not just that; you have got all the other sports that grab a bit as well, and. I just think maybe boxing don't promote itself too well in the purpose, other than a big fight. When a big fight comes, it does its bit, and then you finally get some, some light, you know. Some yeah. Light yeah, of course. Because I say, obviously, turning over in the Norwich gym, there were some big names turning over. How much of help was that? Like, obviously, the John Faxons, the Herbie Highs, Sextons, Paul Davis's, McIntosh's, Earlings, big names there. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, it was a good environment, really. Um, Sam Sexton was, as we were not long into our career, he was being very successful. We got to go with him over to Ireland when he won yeah, a bit and beat Rogan. That was cracking. You were, Herbie was just leaving, really. We didn't really see much of Herbie, but John, we'd done loads of work with John. Liam, in particular, done loads of sparring with John, and it was, it was brilliant because he, he had a revival, John. Yeah, of course, it, yeah. It, out of the kickstop, and again, I don't think Graham got the recognition <laughs> for that. So, um, he, he's took to, we're tucked away in Norwich, and I think, I suppose we like it like that as well, as much as... We don't strive for any sort of recognition. We're not sure. We don't really care. The success that stands is what like my brother always says about the success. We'll, we'll know where we're at at the end. We're all still going through it. So, yeah, that is the main point, isn't it? That is the main point. Obviously, your pro debut, Ryan. Um, I was quite, obviously I looked, looked in the bloke's background, the foreign lad, and he'd only been stopped a couple of times late on by eight and zero shot, Paul Appleby and people like that. And you go yeah. bombing away in one round, Ryan. That's a big statement. Yeah, um, I, I've, it was a special night that um, Liam goes out, gets a, f I think it was a third round stoppage, Liam? Yeah. Was it first? No, it was a first round stoppage, I think. He knocked like, his guy and gets stopped. Michael gets a stoppage. And I, I'd been ready, warmed up for about two and a half hours. And uh, yeah, I just exploded. I didn't, I never, you don't plan for things like that. You don't expect things like that. And it was just a really nice way to top off a really good night. It was a surreal experience. I, I'll never forget looking out onto our fans we had one set hundred people and my brain looking at all these people I knew all of the names first names second you know I knew these people I knew them all and um, I don't sell tickets or anything Liam and Michael do it all they're, they're, like, again another stress another pressure that they always take off me they're the ticket sellers they're the ones who will go and hand the tickets I don't do that so when I looked out to that ring and said all these people that I knew it was crazy it was um, 
it was definitely something that'll stay with me. And 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 it was I think we got a little bit a bit we got quite a good like a uh, bit of recognition on that night because we was on the undercard of Amir Khan and he gets phenomenal followings and it was on ITV as well, which was nice. And I I also as as a student of boxing I looked into my opponent on that night. And he just knocked out a debut in the fight before me. Yeah, so yeah. That was quite interesting. And the amateur and pro is such a change. Like, I expected I'd be weighing in dares before and things like that, which is, a, which is far better for the fighters. It's, it's better for hydration and everything. And we didn't. We ended up weighing in on the morning. And I give him £5 as well on the morning. And as, as an amateur, everything's dead tight. I was always dead tight. I was 54 kilo. They were 54 kilo. And that was it, you know, it was really tight. But in professionals, if you look through my box reg, it's slightly different as well. I've, I've given like £15 away, £9, £11. Like I give quite a lot of weight away in my career so far. Again, I'm not complaining and it's stood me in good stead as well. I've got a lot of rounds out of that as well. Just say, obviously, I oh, on your career, you went in a lot of the rounds. Yeah. Oh, no. Hundred percent, yeah. Um, I had two really good particular two p- p- opponents that I really liked because we were both aggressive, both ready to win. One was um, Gavin Reed. Yeah, he, yeah. He 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 was a good opponent. I found out I broke his rib, and that man carried on fighting for a minute and a half after. <sighs> and the ref stopped, it and he probably shouldn't have stopped. It. He stopped him on his feet, and he was still willing to fight. He he is an absolute warrior. The other one was James Ancliffe. Now he. I had an eight rounder with him, and what a gutsy man! <laughs> Did he? I learned so much off them too because they both, they both come to you know if if I was, if I was a fake or a fraud, if I was if, if they'd they'd find you out really because I watched Gavin, Gavin Reed drop like a good prospect in, in um, the prize fight. I watched him do that, he, and I also seen him knock out a good ex Liverpool. I think he was an NBA champion. So again, and then Ancliffe, Ancliffe was on like. He was on. Um, he was in the twilight of his career, I think, because if you look into his record, he was on a free fight winning streak, and he was the super featherweight Scottish, Scottish champion, champion. Yeah, when I when he fought me, so it was good. I got them. I got them at their best times, for, and it also helped me a lot. I learned lots in bar fights. That, that's why I, I featured the fight on our page because um, that was a tough, dirty, dirty fighting parts from yeah. him, wasn't it? Oh, I think you. Need, I think you need them early on your career to like, obviously for later on in the career, isn't it? Yeah, to help progression for sure. Because honestly, I felt like I had whiplash at the end of that fight. <laughs> he he held on to me, put his out. I learned so much. I mean, that sometimes you're wishing your career you could go back as well. Like I wish I'd have got to fight him again. I wish I'd have got to fight other, you know, styles that could make you look so good, and and then you can show improvement. But you don't really get that that much nowadays because everyone's fast tracked. Everything's got to go a lot faster. You got to get. To I understand that if you're going to put it on TV, there have to be good TV fights. And for on a personal level, I mean, if I if I was promoting myself, say I won the lottery, and I was promoting myself, God, I'd have so many, I'd have so many more fights because <laughs> that's all it comes to. If you've got the money, you can go on any show as long as you can pair the apartment. So yeah, if I win the Euro Millions, see me very active, <laughs> very soon. Obviously, got to say then in that fight, um, obviously hitting you around the back of the head, all things like that. Um, you seem to keep calm though, and not not lose your wag, and that's good to see. Yeah, um, it, yeah, I think that's probably it's a strength it, if you can keep your cool. Because I know what in in a boxing match you have to keep your cool. You have to because he wants me to lose my rag, start swinging, and then get tired. Of course, tight, of course. So, yeah, I did learn lots, and he, he amused me a few times. I thought I thought the referee could have definitely. Slowed him up, but if he'd give him a point, that'd have slowed him up, and uh, he wouldn't have been able to keep giving me. Honestly, I had whiplash for about three days. <laughs> I've been in a fair few car crashes, but that was worse than any whiplash. I'd, I'd, I don't know why I kept fighting. When you're young and you're stupid in boxing, you you always fight against it. Like when he's pushing my arm, he's my head down with his arm. I'm fighting up against him. Realistically, you just got to relax, put your head down, come out of the hold. That he's doing, he's doing it to buy time. I learned so much in that fight. Never would I try and throw myself back up again like I was doing. It was, it was my stupidity that gave me whiplash. Not so much his <laughs> holding me. <laughs> oh, see, um, your styles, Ryan, the switch hitting. Well, where did you, where did you get that from, mate? Um, I've, I'll be honest with you. I watched a, uh, uh, like I said, I'm a massive, massive fan of boxing. I was watching a little bit of Nas Tyson, both of these men. 
one one certain does it a lot more subtle. Mike Tyson switches to southpaw so so well you don't even know he's done it. Some of his best and finest punches come out of the southpaw stance. For, but whereas uh, Naz was far more what would the word be erratic, uh, far more entertaining with showing a switch. And I think both men inspired me to try. And to be honest with you as well. I was always a natural southpaw. My dad told me from the start I stood with it in the southpaw stance. It wasn't until I until I started getting taught in amateur boxing where the most gyms instantly flick you around. If you're not a left-hander, they flick you around and put you orthodox. So I think I was always trying to get back to the southpaw, always. So it's very co- I'm very comfortable in the southpaw stance. Yeah, that's good to see, mate. Um, obviously, um, your first title was at yeah, it was good. I thought I was so hopeful with that fight. I got a little bit let down because he failed to wait by about four or five pounds. He's just never going to make it. Um, and then, but I I knew I knew at eight stone ten I take some beating and and I worked really hard to make the weight. Made the weight, won the fight. Won my best performance. He was very negative. I thought he'd come and have a go, but it was very very negative. And uh, again, I learned a lot though. Yeah, you won every single round. Lot. I think every single round went. Up. Yeah, it was nearly a shutout, but I, I, st- I still look back on that with a little bit of disappointment because I, I always, when fighters like that are negative, you've re- really got to cut them down, corner rush through a lot. I should have done a lot more things, but I was really happy to win the title, and, and I expected that to kickstart my career. I mean, I look at that uh, English title belt, and there's three or four names on it because it's engraved, and every single one of them went on to fight for the British title. So I'm looking at that, hoping, and why not? I'm with the biggest promoter. And it just never happened. And uh, 30 months later, when I grew the weight, and uh, a phone call from um, Sheffield asking, him, am I going to like bear care at that time? I'm going to go. We're like, yeah, we're not making the weight anymore. And then I get called out. <laughs> 30 months of champ, <laughs> nobody wants to fight. The second I move up away, I get, start getting called out. Funny thing, how boxing works. Yeah, that's an easy way to call you out then. Uh. Oh, unbelievable. Once oh. I grew it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Obviously, um, then I took, I took four years to get you back in Norwich in a fight. And then after that fight, it was, um, you had four in a row there. Yeah, um, what happened was, me and we had a meeting with Frank Warren. And it was not long after my dad had died, to be fair. And I don't think I was in the best of moods. And I was, I was really unhappy with the stop start style of the, my career I'm not I'm not I've not been injured touch wood I'm never ill I'm always available to fight and I just I got well upset with it all really to be honest with you so we ended up going our own ways Liam stared because I think he had something to offer didn't he? he's a champion and all yeah. I wanted them to do was give me fights you know to give me a chance to be a champion so I mean I for, I won't change anything in my career because then through that through my stubbornness through my my decisions. I then get to fight Lee Selby. I then get to see where I stand on on um, on the domestic scene. I get to see. I wanted to see how good I were. I mean, the the Norwich shows with uh, Mervyn Turner and Shamrock's promotions are brilliant. He come and approached us, and I think yeah, it's been good business. He's doing a show this week. They've got another show on Friday. Yeah, big show, big show. It, it's really good to have local boxing in the city, and I think I, I hope all the people in Norwich and around the area come and support him because. If you think in the in the radius, I don't know, from Norwich in a good I don't must be forty, fifty miles, you can't find other people doing shows. So it's really good and I think the more fights we get in Norwich the better and there's some good fighters. So, yeah. I mean, there's one from Suffolk, isn't there? You got Anthony Agogo, aren't you? He's, I Craig Boxton as well. Boxton, yeah, he's he's, he's gonna be fine for an English title shot. Yeah, I'll oh. we'll hopefully go down and watch that and Andy Townsend fight. Yeah, that'll be a real good fight. That Townsend flying at the moment, but I think um, he won't like Craig's style. Craig's, I spar a lot with Craig. Very nice, very good lad. Um, and I, I like his team as well. Matt Smith is sound. Yeah, good, good, good set up there. Yeah, he's really good. Before we jump too far ahead, I'm going to just go up to Norwich in uh, 2012. I was there in the North of the ground, the Ronnie Clark fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. But oh. obviously, you the Heron fighter, of course. And I was shocked at you. Yeah, I think I've said this to you before. I've said it to a few people. Um, I come into boxing to be a world champion. I truly believe I can be a world title. Given the opportunity to get a good run, I can be a world champion. I look at other fighters and I think, you, you're a world champion. I'm, I already believe I'm technically... But that, that's that's by the by. The point being, I come in to be the best. Now, that fight was for some sort of in, uh, master's 
some of you know one of these baubles at the end. Yeah, I'm yeah. a purist. I stick to English, British, Commonwealth yeah. world. Now, if I can tick them and go along that line at the end, get through to the European, I'll be ready for a world title. As simple as that. So if I can do the that night. I won seven rounds. It's clear as clear. Um, it was at Super Feather. It was, but but everything for a reason. Because I, I, I say I win that fight. Then what? I've got I'm potentially defend that title on the circuit against somebody else, or it could have been a rematch, or not that there should have been any cause for a rematch. No, of course, win seven or ten rounds. I don't know how he lost the plot that night, that referee. And um, but I, in a way, I must thank him now because you look where I am now, and look where I could. Who knows what that could have done? Say I win it, do I have another Norwich show, and then I don't, I don't fulfil what I wanted to do. I mean, it went long after that. What would I have got fights as well? It was an undefeated fight with an R. Do I get the fights that I asked for? Once that blemish is there, once that draw or in the case of Selby, the loss, I think then you become more... I don't know. I have not been... Um, I've been a very... I think I've been quite avoided, whether it be a Super Bantam or Feather. I've been really avoided in my career. Not. I don't even think it's because of my... I don't think it's because I'm good. I just think it's because I'm not worth... I, I'm one of them... Um, what what do I give? What do I bring to them? I, I'm gonna no hundred percent gonna give them a hard night, whoever it is, and for what? What do they gain? So I don't blame people fighters. I just I think that's where we need the board to do their job, and they, and for me they did. It did take two years from one British title fight to the next, but I was persistent. I knew I deserved. I knew I deserved to have that British title fight because when I lost to Lee Selby, I always thought, well, from that point, I thought, well, he's the best. When he moves on, there's two titles there. And I never got a sniff at either of them. The Commonwealth title still annoys me. It's still a title I want because I fought him for the British and Commonwealth title and never even got... It took me two years to get the British. So Commonwealth's next on the checklist. So hopefully... But then I'll tell you a story. I, I ring up the Commonwealth. I says to him, right, I fought your champion. I give him a good fight. How do I go about becoming manager? How do I get a chance? He went, well, you're not even ranked in the top 10. Jesus Christ. I was like, wait a minute. How's this? <laughs> I'll just give you champion of one of his harder fights. Um, I thought I'd earn, I'd earn a chance, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if it done me all that good not losing the way they expected me to lose. Or I don't think I done. Because obviously, build up to that Lee Selby fight, he was coming back off all them total defenses. He was fighting internationally, and like you say yourself, you were coming to uh, back of fighting journeyman, should we say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, my career, I remember getting out of the ring after stopping. What's his name? Fico, I think his name is, and I didn't enjoy that at all. He he was, he he was, and it's not, it's not me to this business route, but he was terrible, and he was scared as well. I don't want to go into. I want to look at the guy across the ring, and I want him to look at me like I'm going to try and beat you. And in the competition, I got into boxing to try and be the best, go out my way to be the best, and fighting people like him don't prove nothing. It, it didn't prove nothing to me. I, you know. I, they're not the you know the Lee Selby fights do prove things to you. They prove you you get to test your character. The Samir fights get to test you. It, you have to have. I mean, you have to fight so many different styles. And yeah, you do need journeymen in some sense. But when you get to a certain level, what, what do they actually do for you? I mean, I, I left um, I left the amateurs with an all right record, fighting a lot of the best kids, and I struggled in the amateurs to get fights at the championships as well. To be honest with you, but. I don't. I didn't want to leave that and then go to fighting people who are going to be easy. Or I want. I want to be in real, real fights. And I think any fight we've done, well, they ain't got back to you. You, you, you got fight. You got people. You, you got people paying money to come and watch you fight. Then you want to put on a good show and you need a good dance partner. It's as simple as that. You, you want to put on an entertain, entertaining fight. You need the other guy to want to win as much as you. Oh, that's brilliant. Because obviously, um, in the Selby fight, you started so well that. Big left hook, I think it was. It shook him early on the first round. And what do you think went wrong in that fight? Or experience, I've always said it. Um, I always stick to it. You've got a guy who's had five consecutive twelve round title fights. Now he didn't do the twelve rounds, but like any fight, will tell you you train for the twelve rounds. So they're all banked. And if you don't, and if you stop him in before, that's brilliant because that's all that energy saved and banked. And you roll on. And he was he was flying. He was rolling. I was meant to fight him on the fight before. And if that Lee Selby would have turned up, well, I know the story would have been different. The Lee Selby that turned up for me, the fight after, because he fought in June, I think, because I was meant to fight him then. I rung up, I'll fight. I've seen on Twitter that he said, no one wants to fight. I couldn't believe it. I was sat there <laughs> thinking, well, I watched him against Lindsay and I thought he looked brilliant. But I saw my style, I thought my style would cause him all the troubles 
that he did. Not enough troubles in the end. But his experience shone through that night. He, he fiddled me about. He worked hard. He's super fit. He's huge at the weight. And um, I give him nothing but respect. One, for taking the fight. Two, for then continuing and, and going on to win the European, going on to win the world. He's he's proved that he, he's, you know, he's, he's a real fighter. He's good. And I, I'm, I'm a fan of his now. And I just hope, you know, and, and again, in a perfect, in a dream world, a perfect world, we'll meet again. We'll meet again. So that'd be something special. I've been mean, looking forward to that rematch. And when, like I say, at the right time for you, this, this obviously build up to the Samir fight. And, Obviously, it annoyed me a bit that you were taking that fight off like 10 months out of the ring. I thought, yeah. what's Ryan doing? What's Ryan doing? 10 months. Um, what it were, uh, Josh Ryanson vacated his title really late. He could have vacated in the January and he waited to the February. Again, an annoyance to myself because if he, if he would have vacated in the January, me and Samir could have fought in the March on, on the big hall bill. But he vacated late. They weren't ready for March. He then got put to another day and another day. And it was, oh, I was just so happy to be in the ring looking at him because some points during the camps and things, I was thinking, this isn't going to happen. So when it does, when it does finally happen, I was over the moon, yeah. Oh, so obviously it's a great fight on the night. And from a personal, being a, being a Welsh fan, I got a bit of stick on the night for being biased. But I think a lot of your work went unnoticed, but even by the commentators, that is straight to the stomach and stuff like that. They were slowing him down. Obviously they paid it dividends in the end, but... I think they were, this came across the commentators were against you that night, mate. Yeah, it was it was a strange one. I have given it to them both personally and over Twitter and things like that. Because <laughs> I'm just honest, you know. I I have a unique experience, and again, this is something I've said to a lot of people. I have a unique, unique perspective in this. I've finished a 12 round British title fight, and I knew I'd lost, and that is a horrible feeling. No one was putting me up in there. Michael wouldn't have done it. He tried to raise man, and you ask him. I looked at him. I'm no, Michael. I lost that. He tried, you know. He thought it was close, and I've looked back recently. I've watched that fight so much closer and so much better than what I thought. You know, I've been kicking myself for two years about that fight, but I watched it to see what Samir's attempt was, and compared to my attempt against Selby, and I put myself in both positions. and I tried to beat Selby. I tried to knock him out. I tried to hurt him, and I think I did hurt him a couple of times. He hurt me a couple of times, to be fair. And uh, it was a good, genuine fight in in my fight with Samir. I don't know what his tactics were. I don't believe you can win a fight like that. You just can't. If you're gonna, you're gonna have to be perfect to win a fight like that. And to, and you, there was no, there was no declaration from him to say I'm gonna take this time, I'm gonna win this title. And another thing I've said all the way through this is there's two fights going on. There's the physical and the mental. The physical is for us all to see. And physically, I'm pretty sure I was winning it. The guy run, he would not fight me. He held me rather than fight me. Um, He'd done some all right work with his jab, but come on, a lot of them does does it my arms and not yes. my clean, which is, if the commentators tell you it's a landing, sometimes you, I don't blame people for listening and being, you know, their opinion definitely swear towards the boxer. Of course, and, uh, of course, yeah. And and, and for me, I, mentally I know I was crushing him. I know I never, I never relented once from the second that bell started to the end of trying to get him, to try and stop him, to try and... You know, put, force my way. There's a term, ring generalship. Now, I believe I was a general in that ring from round one to round 12. I don't think he got to move me around that ring at any point. I think he was in a bit of a survival mode, especially after the knockdown. And prior to it as well, he didn't, He like you said, I'm glad you spotted it. A lot of them body shots were hurting him. And straight right to the body was killing him. He took some good body shots as well. And I can only give Samir credit for not folding and quitting because... I sent him. I was just trying to give him less, and he like he just stopped fighting, didn't he? On the one, yeah, of course, fight. yeah. Fight. So he, he's definitely toughened up in that stack. So I'll give him his credit there. Because that straight to the body looked like one of them fudding shots. Well, one of them shots you don't want to be hit hit with. Do you know what I mean? They, they yeah, slow yeah. you down. Yeah, the, the body shots. It was always going to be the case to get him, but God, he was on his bike. He, 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 I, I don't know what their game plan was. I don't believe you can win fights like that. It's no, not a negative. Side. Um, there's a lot of noise from every shot he landed. Yeah, there was there was a bit they were trying to con it. It was an old amateur school trick, and I yeah. think that, that can go against you because the judge is sat there and you're cheering. That can annoy him. That can think, yeah. wait a minute, you're trying to con me here. So I think, yeah, I think they've probably thought, no, I'm not having that. And uh, uh, they obviously got it right on the night, and uh, I think it was Michael Alexander. I agreed with his card the most, and uh, it was a great fight. And obviously, um. The rematch. A lot of people have asked me, is the rematch on the cards? I'd take that in a shot. I offered him in the ring. Um, I offered him in his change room. My brothers did. I've not heard much from the camp. I've heard much from my own team. So 
regarding my next fight, I'm in. Uh, I ain't really got a clue what's going on. To be honest with you, Adam, I ain't yeah. got a clue. It's not really good because I'd love to be on the Manchester Burn December, pocket some Christmas money. I got four kids, so exactly, it'd exactly. Be nice, but you know that's just the way it is. There's a bit I'm few. Still training, so. Sorry, mate. There's a few questions coming in from that um, the interview with Coogan Cassis. Did you ever get your answer off him? No, I'm very, <laughs> very, very disappointed. I think he's ignorant. And yeah. I'm going to be telling him this when I see him. I'm going to tell him you're ignorant. I mean, you're going to make an opinion on a fight that you didn't... I always assumed, and I assumed wrongly, I think, that he's a boxing fan. And we've all got a, a right to our opinions. But why give one on, on the basis? Because I've never realised, whilst he's trying to give me his opinion, he was interviewing Mitchell Smith at the exactly. same time. So exactly. how can he give me a real opinion? He's not watching the fight. He's listening to the claps. And just... You usually know from fighters when you have a look at them at the end. Then the fighters know. This is what I've always known. The fighters know. And I, I knew against Selby that I hadn't won. And I knew against Samir I definitely won. I was more shocked than anyone when they said split. And I mean, let's have it right. There's only one judge gives it to him by one point. The other two give it to me by four and six, I think. Yeah, well, yeah. The scrutiny should cut a lie with the guy who doesn't <laughs> score it. Not with the other two, because the other two's in a very similar fight, right? Yeah. Oh, another thing, like sorry, right? Another thing comes into. We'd come contact with. Do you think the referees should uh, obviously watch it back on, t watch it on the television in a closed room or something like that? Well, yeah, I think because we've got only so many refs, I think they work every week. I don't know. If they'd sometimes it should be pulled up. Yeah, sometimes we pull up. Come watch this. I really rate Ian John Lewis, but I think he definitely stopped that holding because people come, they pay their forty, fifty, hundred pounds to come and watch a fight, and when one man's out and out try and stop that that's that's not fair on them people and uh, if I ever did rematch it might be the first thing I'd stress to it whoever the referee would don't let this guy fiddle about and hold because it's it, it, it ruins it people come here to see a fight now if he's going to outbox me and then because he wouldn't have to hold if he was that good of a boxer would he of course, it, of course. You know, he had to hold because I was getting in his face and he weren't being effective with that jab that jab was being nullified I was, you know, whether I made a miss or he just had nothing, so... Yeah, obviously, I noticed a lot of his, like, footwork. He was, he was at a distance, and he's moved around. The commentators were loving that, and I was thinking, he's not even in distance. Yeah, he's not doing it <laughs> as, as, as an, He's not doing it like, as as boxing fans, we appreciate the ones who can do it, but stay in a, in a position to still work. He didn't yeah. want to be in a position to work. He wanted to be nowhere near me. And, um, and you, exactly your, your head movement and your dipping under that left hook, and I think that they went unnoticed so many times. I think what I, I did tweet um what's barry jones i did tweet him and I, i've looked into barry's record and that and barry's 18 fights he, i think he had 18 lost one and uh he never stopped anybody and i think i told him this on the night you had a stylistic bias you'd already made your mind up that you wanted the box the boxer as such which annoys me because I, I think i'm a much better boxer than me i just didn't take up that role on the night i didn't take up the boxing role and if we was to rematch a box i'd box far far better but I was a little bit more like I think the knockdown ruined me I knocked him down I thought right you're getting it now and I knew a lot of people had money on me to win by knockout as well <laughs> but that didn't help yeah. so then I, I I lost my I didn't use my boxing brain very well at some points but still it was never close in my eyes Remember, no. me and my brothers are always honest I come back to the rain after three I said it was 2-1 to me and then I don't remember even ever considering that I was behind in that fight the first time we get any sort of thing was Frank Warren come up and said the commentators have got it close and I remember thinking what fight are they watching <laughs> crazy this guy's not trying to win he's, he's not doing anything sustained and I've never known anyone win a fight on the jab because I can't remember I have to watch it back and it, yeah it probably well, it is class when someone's constantly holding but if, if you took away my work when he's holding because I, I was punching very clean I must hit him with about 30 right hands throughout the night when he held my left hand if you don't count them punches in the hold then yeah it probably is a class fight then but I'm punching him there, and he's not working. So exactly, that I think still it's a still a landing punch, right? Yeah, of course. I, th I think you hit a nail on the head with that one, mate. But how much has, it, has it, your life changed since obviously getting the British title? Well, <laughs> I've put a tweet out, didn't I? I did tweet. I said um, it's crazy. I'm not even the best in Britain. I asked to go to Lee Selby. And I'm still not even the best in my own household. <laughs> so it's not changed a lick, really. Um, I need. And big fights. More. I want some defining fights. I want. I want the best in the, in my division. Um, I'm gonna work to get because I've found out over the last few years you never get what you want. You get what you work for. 
far. So I worked really hard to, to be British champion against Samir. And um, I look forward to getting a dare and an opponent to work hard again. I'm, I'm always in the gym. I always train. I'm, I'm not a, a part-time pro or anything like that. Um, I'm lucky as well because every camp, you see the two years where, yeah, I have been inactive. I was always on Liam's camp, so I was lucky. And I've, I've been Liam's chief sparring, sparring partner since I was five years old. <laughs> well, it's going to change regardless of opponent um, and that goes the same for Liam that's great obviously you're moving on um, is there anyone you, you want to fight out there obviously you've mentioned a few names already anyone I want to fight um, I don't, it's, it's not even the, it's not even the opponents I just want the belts I want the Commonwealth title I want the European title and then we'll go from there so whoever's so, on them two belts I'm not sure who the European champion is because I believe Warrington vacated that yeah, that's vacant, I think, mate. Yeah. So that that'd be a step in the right direction for me. I mean, I'm I'm not getting any younger. I ain't. I've not, I've not really got time on my side. I do. I am. I do believe I'm a very young 29. Maybe not so much mentally now. I've definitely got a bit older there, but physically, I'm still. Twins are renowned for developing light anyway, so I still feel fresh. I just, I just want, I just want some big fights. A, a European title, a Commonwealth title. That that really, that really, you know. Get, I don't mind defending my British title. I think if to me that happened, I'd, I'd take that. I'd, I'd, I'd take anything to be honest with you, Adam. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to what is offered and what is, what is the options. Um, there's some. I, I can't call anyone out. It's just not me. I've never called anyone out. I've. Yeah, that's totally fair enough, mate. All I say is, as a fan of yours, hopefully by the time you do the next big step up, you've got them fights behind you. Yeah. The right def- fights behind you and active it, being active. That's it. It's huge, Adam. I tell you, that activity is everything. That's what I need. Some activity, and I'd like to fight some different styles. I'd like to fight a southpaw. Some, I like. I just tick a few more boxes if I can. But if not, um, a European Commonwealth title, both of them belts. One's Vec and one's Warrington's. <sighs> There's something that really interests me. Um, I don't want to hang around. I want to get going. I want to get on. Of course, mate. Of course. But obviously, uh, you're not on that level yet. But. Uh, you're in one of the best divisions around, obviously, featherweight. It's yes. massive, massive champions down there. Who stands out for you there? Um, Lomachenko's special. Of course, I yeah. think Walters has now moved up. If not, Walters is. <laughs> the axe man is, uh, he, he looks tasty, but Lomachenko's so special. Um, he's yeah. fast. He's, he's a so far. Um, he's got the pedigree, one of the best amateur pedigrees that you'll you'll read about, sit here about. It's phenomenal. I think one loss in over 380 fights is insane. He's a, he's a real pleasure to watch. Um, I I do fancy Selby against pretty much the others, other than Walters and Lomachenko. Were <laughs> I fought Lee Selby? Yeah, they'll they'll be favourites. Yeah, they'll, most people. I wouldn't put into the nine star division against anyone. He's big, and I think the more aggressive they are, the better for him. And I think the, the talk of him and Mares. Now that's a fight I see. Lee Selby winning and looking good as well yeah. and that last upon there was people slaying him now they mustn't I looked straight into that last upon and I watched him fight Nanito Denner now Denner killed him dropped him gave him a sick knock but the man got up I've never seen a man get knocked down like that and anyone listening and yourself Adam if you haven't seen that fight type in Nanita Donna against um, Mon- Monel what's his name the last opponent Selby just fought. Uh, yeah, f- um, Montel. Um, Montel. Montel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Type that fight in. Watch that knockout. I haven't seen that yet, mate. It's <laughs> phenomenal because the the knockout's sick. It's, it's crazy. But the guy gets up in about eight, nine seconds and the ref then finally calls him off. But point being, everyone's surprised that he hasn't knocked Selby, didn't knock that guy. Watch that fight and you'll realise it. No one knocking him out. For, and I thought it was a tough, hard opponent and Selby will be even better in his next fight. Like, he's ticked a box there. A very tough, awkward, fast. And Amara is an aggressive fighter against Selby. Selby will look a million dollars. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Obviously, you're, obviously in, you're in, in camp in a minute. We've talked about sparring with Sam Sex. And obviously, um, you Yeah, yeah. He's known as the Yut. He's a, he's a good lad. He was on Channel 5 the other night. Yeah, I've sparred him today. I've done, a, done six rounds today. He's good. He's really fast. That must be a nice technical spar between you two. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's improving lots. Um, it was his trainer was saying as well. And I think... The more sparring you can do with higher level um, sparring partners, like we were lucky, we had Faxton. I've sparred a few world champions. I've, I've been up to Leicester, sparred Rendell Monroe, uh, and that that brings you on. It helps you in in, in like, and and here I I love working with um, 
Yusef because his speed in big fighting house gloves is very, very good. I used to love working as well. He's, an, he's another fighter whose speed in big gloves was brilliant and that, that keeps them reactions. It's all realistic. Um, sparring is our only practice. It's one of my favourite exercises. I'm honest, it probably is my favourite exercise. I, I love sparring. Mentally, you have to think. Physically, you have to work. It's uh, it's brilliant. And they come a long way to spar us. You know, two hours, two and a half hours, they come to spar us. And uh, I've got Jupp this weekend. who He's fighting Mitchell Smith next. So he's oh. coming up to do eight, ten rounds on Saturday. So I really He's coming up to Norwich, is he, Jupp? Yeah. We started to get people come to us, which is nice. I mean, we, yeah. we have travelled ourselves. And I, I have every intention to look into try and get some world-class sparring myself. I think, personally... I would, I would be such a benefit. Hopefully, I'm gonna. I ain't even talk around this yet, but I'm gonna inquire to go up to the Gallagher's to help them, and also go to Frampton to help them. I, I, you remember when Eubanks bad Frosh and Groves? Yeah, yeah. I think that that that's what I could do for both. I think my I could stylistically match like I could help both camps in in a sense. And I'm neutral anyway. I just want the best fighter. To, when it's also a proper 50-50 fight. It's been my top fight for the last two and a half years. That I'm so happy that fight's happening. Yeah, I'd brilliant. Love to be, I'd love to go and spar them anywhere. I've really rare ball fighters. It's rare I spar, like I get to spar smaller people, but with that you get their speed, you get their experience. So it's something that I'd like to do. That's something I would go out my way to go and do, get some rounds with a pair of them. Well, obviously, that'd be a great experience for yourself, wouldn't it? It all helps. Yeah, definitely. I'm hoping to get go and get some of that. I have every intention to try. Obviously, um, moving on, you um, there's a lot of talk of a Carrow Road showdown. Yeah. Um, and obviously, the Walsh's brothers. There's a lot, of, obviously, the Bohans and Nathan Bales, the Sid Marks, the Hapsons, the Agogo, and this goes on. There'll be some big names. That's what I stadium. mean. It would be a cracking all, like, Norfolk show. I mean, it'd be, well, Norfolk Suffolk, innit? Because you've still got a Gaga there. So it'd be, it'd, be an, it'd be massive. It'd be brilliant for East Anglia. It'd be brilliant because... When was the last huge shot like that? I mean, I, I can't remember. And you know, what what it would entail, what it would need, I think you'd need a world title. You need to get Liam that world title. I could hopefully be defending or fighting for another title, defending my British at least. Or, or like I said, ideally I could be fighting for a European title. There's a vacant title. Why not? I'll fight anybody for that title. I, what, then, you, then you're looking at your two top fights would be a world and a European. Then after that, you'd have all the local lads. You're sure you could get them some title fights. Nerf and he won't be long before he's knocking on the door for titles. Of course, it, yeah. He won the IBF youth title, but I think he can win like the English Commonwealth British start looking he's start looking to hit the domestic scene as soon as because he's just coming back from a hand operation at the moment. Obviously Mervyn Turn is he's looking after these lads and he's done a brilliant job to keep these like get the right fight, right fights for the lads at the right times, hasn't he? Definitely. Mervyn Turn and Graham Everett. I think Graham Everett's the matchmaker really. Mervyn Turner's the promoter, and what they're a cracking team, and they're a credit to um, to boxing it up this way. They are they, because without them, pff, there'd be nothing really. Fighters would be doing, it'd be, they'd be struggling, and uh, yeah, I have nothing but respect for the pair of them. They're a cracking team. You come to any of the shows, they're as good as any of the any of the shows that I've fought on um, because they've got they've been around a few different venues. They've done nightclubs. They've done the the one that you seen the, the cow shed as they call. Yeah. And then they've got this new one, which is in like a church type thing. And they're the it's halls. Really, yeah. It's a really good venue. Um, they make a lot of noise. Is there for Morris's fans in particular? Make lots of noise. Um, it is, it is always a good night. And that last show I was really impressed with. Really good. Obviously, um, the Norwich show. Great show. I feel like that. You're one of the, obviously one of the older people in the gym now, and you give a voice to people. Definitely, I can't help but do that. You know, I've been doing that since. I've been doing that for the last five years. <laughs> I see something, I can't help because I always think, well, I'd like that. And sometimes we did get it. Like John Faxon, he's always give us advice, and he's always someone worth listening to. He's been there, done it, and I always listen to to John. And um, I just think as a boxing fan, if I see something. Especially the the like the mates at the gym as well. So if I see something, I always try and give what I think would be my best advice. And as a boxing fan, I do see things a little bit different sometimes than just a boxer. I uh, and I always try and give my little bit of advice. Mainly, what I do always say to fighters is watch people. I got into boxing as an amateur, and I was watching Tyson like religiously. I watched Tyson like uh, he's special to me. And I watch fighters in my gym now, and, and like Johan recently, I've told him he needs to be watching the Kolarevs and the Triple Gs because 
his style can mimic certain points. I'm not saying you you don't have to be one percent as good as him. You just have to use one percent of what you see them doing. It's a very it's a mimicking sport boxing. You see it. It, it, like, like I said at the very start, Tyson and Nats had a massive influence on, on me. Obviously, I don't find nothing like either of them, but I nick the little things that I like about them, you know. And and, and that's what I said. Who's the other fighter? Billy. Like, I, I I always drop a little bit of advice if I can. And if they're listening, they're listening. It'd be nice to see um, Joe Hearn go and win the title with a chopping right hand that we've been talking about in the gym on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I was uh, just said one by you, the boxing rec rankings. How, how do you feel about <laughs> that? Because I've just checked it obviously today. I wonder if it's going to change. Obviously, they got I'm no disrespect to the guy. They got Di Davis ahead of you. Oh, they're, they're just stupid, aren't they? they yeah. They, 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 I did read a message on one of those. We don't do it anymore. It's automatic computer system, but the system sucks. And don't it? If your British champions rank behind um, Di Davis, or I mean, I think Bailey's in front of me, and I beat Bailey. And exactly, yeah. It's, it's just a crazy, stupid system. There's nothing taken away from Di or Bailey. Di Davis is a, a good, tough competitor, and um, Bailey's probably he's one of the most avoided. Like, he's not a journeyman. He's so much better than that. I've watched him live a few times, and I've got a lot of respect for him, especially obviously, after he caught Michael. Obviously, guys, I just have to say that obviously, um, whereas Michael was supposed to be going down there to get some rounds off Ian, and he blew him away in one <laughs> round, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, we had a little bet on that, me and Michael, and um, Bailey's biggest mistake was to nut Michael. He nutted him, you know, he made it rough, and then once he got rough, Michael got really rough. So, But again, credit to him, four times I think he pulled himself up, or at least three off the canvas, and then most people would have stared down after the first uppercut. So, yeah. again, credit to the man. It's great to see, that was great to see. But obviously, I don't want to obviously ask you questions about other people, but Michael, it's a bit frustrating being a Michael fan over the years. Obviously, he's turned his back away from the sport lately. Yeah, um, Michael's an all or nothing character. He's either all in or all out, and uh, I like it that way. And aware, but boxing, and I'm not sure if he loves it anymore. And you've got to love, you got to love this spot because, oh God, you have to work for everything. Yeah, <laughs> you of have course. to work for everything. You have to love it. So that means on that, like the times that is since my fight till this phone call today, or Skype today, I've had nothing in my towards my career. And if I didn't love boxing, I'd be already spitting my dummy out. Yeah, it's, it's something I'm used to now. So. I think you've got to really love this sport. In it, once when, you, when you're when you're a professional boxer, you've got to love it. So, and if you don't, you shouldn't. You should definitely not be doing it. If you don't love this sport, you should not be doing it. Because it's yeah, that's my point on that. Is I tell my mum, I tell my missus, I tell my kids. It, it, boxing's really dangerous, so you could die. But if I die doing boxing, well, I'll be happy because that wouldn't be a tragedy to me because I love this sport. Yeah. If I walk out onto the street and get by a bus and die, that's a tragedy. If I die to illness, that's a tragedy. Dying doing something you love, well then, well, I die happy, don't I? I you know, ask me a million words to die uh, and give me a choice to die. Well, I'd rather die fighting. I'd, ra- I'd rather that than illness. Hit by a but you know, rubbish things. <laughs> Let me go out swinging. Are you and, going, um, out, going out in style, you want? Happy. Oh, so obviously we'll come to the end of the show here, Ryan, but just before we go, I'd like to get your predictions on this week's boxing thing, mate. Yeah, no start, problem. Starting with Crawler against Perez. Where do you think that's going, mate? Oh, well, I've, I'm gutted for Corolla because he should be the world champion. I, I watched the fight last time and Corolla was, for me, the winner. Um, on this one, I'm going to go Corolla, hopefully, to, yeah, Corolla points. I think it'll be a little bit tighter. I think Perez will come knowing that Corolla's a much better boxer than I think. I think he might have underestimated him in the first one. Well, that's brilliant, mate. Obviously, you've got, you've got um, Arthur Abraham versus Martin Murray. A lot of people are worried about the yeah, judges um, in that one. Yeah, and, and, and rightfully so. We've seen Macklin. We've seen... There's another fact, Murray himself. We've yeah. seen, seen dodgy decisions over there. So, they'll be... They know what to expect. I just think my brother's... This is my brother's quote, and I totally agree with him. The Arthur Abraham that fought Paul Smith won, then Murray's got a shout. The Arthur Abraham that fought Paul Smith two, I, I don't think Murray can beat that Arthur Abraham. So, it's all down to how the champion has took this fight. I'm going Abraham on points. And I, I'm hoping it's not controversial. I'm hoping it's just a good fight, and he's the winner. And I, and I think Murray will be a, a big, strong, hard man to beat himself. But the experience that Arthur has, that'll, that'll shine through. Yeah, like you say, as long as it's the right decision on the night, that's all that matters, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And obviously, oh, sorry. Obviously, the big fight the weekend is obviously the Cotto versus Alvarez. Oh, this is a heart and head, isn't it? My heart oh no, Cotto to win. It, but no, I don't. I want the best man to win, as, as always. The man who's trained hardest, wants it most, the hungriest, I want him to win. But my heart is strained to Cotto 
my head says the youth, the youth of Canelo, and even experience, Canelo's got so much experience for his age. So I, I'm gonna, I was, I can't sit on the fence. So I got Canelo points, but um, if I was wrong on that one, I, I won't be, I won't be bothered at all. My heart sticks with Carl. I love Carl. I think he's a, a cracking fighter. I think Canelo's got lots of time, and he's also for his age and that Canelo's special. Just look, Canelo, he seems to come on the ring a lot bigger, doesn't he? A lot bigger on the night. Yeah, he's going to be massive. I've seen some videos of him recently. He's ripped right now. So, yeah, he will be massive. And he still keeps his speed. He, he's a bit of a monster, he is. Yeah, he's a bit of a, bit of a freak, the ring, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he is. Good fighter. Yeah, obviously we'll come up to the end of the hour. And... <laughs> no problem, Adam. Anytime. Anytime. Oh, cool. That'd be lovely. That's brilliant. Thank you then, Adam. Thank All you for your time. Right. Cheers, Ryan. Catch you later, mate.